Vanguard recently announced that they are selling 280,000 of their small business retirement plans. That's right, things like solo 401ks. And that raises some big questions like, well, who are they selling these plans to? If you're a small business owner, how will it affect you? And what, if anything, should you do about it? And I suppose even beyond that, what, if anything, does this mean with regard to Vanguard? Are things going okay over there? Should we be worried? Well, that's what we're going to cover in today's video. I've got my coffee with me. I hope you do too. So let's dive right in. And we'll start with the news. So let me show you this. This was a press release. A census. Now, um, I should stop there. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I've never heard of this company before, but that's the pronunciation I'm going with. A census. To acquire Vanguard, and I'm pretty sure I've pronounced that correctly, individual 401k multi-seps and simple IRA plans. It turns out that Vanguard is selling, and you can see it here, there are 280,000 plans that fall into this category. So again, individual 401ks also sometimes referred to as a solo 401k. Those are, are, are plans for small businesses where it's just the owner or can also include the owner's spouse. I have a solo. My wife and I have a solo 401k. So they're selling all of those. They're also selling multi sep So in other words, you can have a SEP. It's called a SEP IRA. I think uh, you probably hear it referred to that way as just yourself, just a single owner uh, owned business, no employees. They are not selling those. So you don't have to worry about this if you have an individual SEP IRA, it's just you, no employees, with Vanguard. But uh, you can also use a SEP with employees. And if, if you have that, yep, uh, your plan is leaving Vanguard, going to a census, and then uh, simple IRA plans, which uh, uh, are also small business plans, they are going as well. The transaction is set to close uh, in the third quarter of this year. And it, of course, it raises some big questions. The first is, if this is affecting you or will affect you, what, if anything, should you do about it? I have to be honest here. When I first heard this, I thought, you know, maybe it's not a bad thing. Why? I had some small business plans at Vanguard back in the day, including a defined benefit plan. And I have to tell you, the experience was awful, just dreadful. Their website looked like it was built back in the 1990s and no one had updated it. The processes to get money into the account were just a hassle and uh, you couldn't integrate it with your personal account. So for example, I had totally separate logins. I couldn't go to one login and see all of my personal and business accounts, something that you can do, for example, at Fidelity. It was really just a poor user experience. Now, that was a few years back, so maybe it's changed today. Maybe it's better, I don't know. Uh, but, but when I saw the, the news, I thought, man, maybe this isn't so bad, but there, there is one problem and that is a census uh, does charge some fees. So we have to look at that and I'll show you this. So first of all, this is a census website. As I said, I've never heard of them before this transaction. They could be a wonderful company. I have no earthly idea, but I did, I did dig into the fees. And if you can read the fine print right here, I see if I can make it any bigger, I, I guess so. There is a $20 annual fee per Vanguard fund per account holder in the individual, they say K, so 401k plan, and a $20 annual fee per participant for custodial services. Now, I suppose one might argue, you know, on the one hand, okay, we don't like fees, but maybe that's not the end of the world. I guess we each have to make up our, our, our own minds on that. But I will tell you that there are some really good alternatives that don't charge those fees. What are they? Well, we'll look at them. I'll show you two. And there could be, there could be others. I'm, I'm not suggesting these are the two best, but to me, they're reasonable options. The first is Fidelity, solo 401k, and uh, they don't have any fees. In fact, right down here, there is no opening cost, closing cost, or annual fee for Fidelity self-employed 401k, $0 commissions for a U.S. stock ETF and options trades. Now, I will tell you that, that Fidelity does not offer a Roth solo 401k, just a traditional. If you want a Roth, Schwab is, is an option. They have both traditional and Roth individual plans, and they don't have any fees either. Here's their pricing. You can see a bunch of zeros. <laughs> I guess that's what you want to see. So one response to this would be to simply move your plan, whether again, we're looking at solo 401ks, 
Fidelity and Schwab offer SEP IRAs uh, as well. I don't have much experience with the simple IRA plan, but there's no doubt options that you could look at if you didn't want to go to a census and you could uh, work now to do your due diligence, find the best place for your small business plan and move it there. Again, I think Fidelity and Schwab are probably two really good choices, but you have until about the third quarter of 2024 this year, at least according to the, the news, before this transaction actually moves forward. So you do have some time to figure out what's best for you. And maybe you'll decide to stay with the census. I think if, if I were in that situation today, I'm not, I don't have business accounts at Vanguard, I'd probably be moving to Fidelity or Schwab, but that's just me. I think for those Vanguard lovers out there, and I'm certainly in that group, it does raise yet another question about the future of Vanguard. You know, they've just had, seems to have problem after problem after problem. I don't necessarily see this as a problem per se, but if we go back in time, you know, they had, they had that fiasco with the target date funds that triggered a bunch of taxes. If you held the funds in uh, in a taxable account and, and, and they found themselves in a class action lawsuit as, as a result, they've kind of only half-heartedly moved into the robo-advisor business. They do offer digital advisory service, but frankly, uh, it's not very good. They've totally given up on cash management uh, for the most part. Uh, certainly as compared to say a Schwab uh, or, or F Fidelity. And now they're exiting, you know, the small business retirement plans. Now, maybe from a business perspective, it's the right thing to do. Uh, maybe they're just not in a position to properly handle these types of accounts and to give small business owners the kind of features and services uh, that, that they deserve. And maybe they're just trying to refocus, you know, where they spend their time and attention. But it raises the bigger question, I think really, I'll say it doesn't raise the bigger question. It actually just answers the bigger question. I think at this point, from a, a features and services per perspective, Vanguard is really no longer trying to compete with the likes of Fidelity and Schwab. They just can't. And part of it might be that uh, they've been the, a victim of their own success. They are, of course, the, the sort of the founder of low-cost investing. And, uh, you know, Fidelity and Schwab, while they certainly offer low-cost investing, you can have accounts there and pay no fees and invest in low-cost index funds, uh, which is exactly what I do. They offer much more expensive services uh, and features, services and features at expense levels that Vanguard typically doesn't offer, whether you're talking about managed accounts, even their robo-advisory services, depending on exactly uh, what you do. They have a, maybe they have actively managed funds. Of course, Vanguard has some as well. But overall, you can find yourself at a Fidelity or Schwab paying a lot more fees than you'd pay uh, for similar, I'll call them similar, similar services at Vanguard. But of course, that gives Fidelity and Schwab the capital to make the investments into the services and features that they offer. So, uh, you know, it may be that uh, Vanguard is sort of a victim of their, their low cost success I don't know. That's just, I guess, my own sort of interpretation of what I'm seeing. In some ways, I, at, at the likes of Fidelity and Schwab, I've become sort of a freeloader. I get the benefits of all these great services and features that they offer without paying their high fees. It's sort of an approach that uh, longtime viewers will know I recommend wherever you keep your accounts. But that's what's going on. Yes, they are going to be selling solo 401ks, multi, you know, SEPs, so SEPs that have employees, not just the owner, and simple IRAs. It's uh, planned to close in the third quarter of this year. It's going to a company called a census. It appears to charge some fees. How important that is to you, how outrageous you think those fees are, I guess, is your call. If you have a, a plan that's affected, you can always transfer it. I think Fidelity and Schwab are uh, good options. There may be many others. And at the end of the day, yeah, I think Vanguard has just stopped competing. They're not going to be the full feature, full service platform that we find at Fidelity or Schwab. Does that mean that if you have accounts at Vanguard, you should leave? No, not at all. I think particularly as you're saving for retirement or saving long term, you don't need a lot of the features and services. You just need an IRA account or maybe a taxable account and you just throw your money in every month or quarter or year. But certainly as you get more complicated situations, you have many more account types. And as you transition into retirement where cash management uh, becomes really important, or if you just like the sort of extra support that I think you can get at a Fidelity or Schwab, certainly in my experience, their support is much better. Uh, but, but apart from that, if you just have your simple account, you're saving your money in your IRA every year, yeah, you might not need to change. Uh, Vanguard may be perfectly fine, but still, it's sad for me to see that they're just, I think, giving up 
on the idea of competing with the likes of Fidelity or Schwab. At least that's my take on not only this sale of the retirement plans, but what I've seen over the last several years. So there you go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below the video. I'll be happy to help you out any way I can. I'll also uh, leave links to what I've shown you in the video uh, right below the video. Until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.